That, that's me, your lighthearted host and expressionist. And this, this is my podcast, Love and Lies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the interview. A lot of people have been anticipating this interview. Um, what are we going to call you? What what name are we going to use? Sebastian. Sebastian. Is there a reason for Sebastian? Is it just because it's a um, sexy name? Uh, a, a lady friend one time told me that's a sexy name, so I decided to use that. <laughs> it is a sexy name. Is there anybody out there that has the name Sebastian? Now they know. The reason why I wanted to interview you is because I've always wanted to sit down and, and pick the mind of a cheater, a serial adulterer. And there was even a, a national case that was linked to you and your cheating behavior that we can't talk about right now, but I wanted to mention it to the listeners so that they could better understand why I actually wanted to interview you. Um, there were a few different assets of it, but my my behavior was the catalyst of it all. Right. Well, that's all we can say about that, but now we have set the stage. Okay, so you're a serial adulterer, married with children? Yes. And how long have you been yes. married? I've been married for over 10 years. For 10 closer years? To, closer to 15. So you guys have been together for 15. Um, is this your first marriage? Yes. Wow, okay, all right. And so you you consider it a successful marriage? Yes, absolutely. And how many times, I'm just going to go right into it, how many times have you cheated on your wife? Um, physically, I'm going to guess maybe 20 plus times, but never emotionally. Okay, so you you did mention uh, to me when we talked when we initially um, spoke on the phone that you considered emotionally cheating with somebody on, on even like online somewhere cheating versus ha just having sex with a woman. Yes, it's, well, in, in to put it blunt, as we all know, cheating is cheating, but I find it a higher grade and more offensive if there's feelings attached if there was a, a drunken mistake or just an attraction that happened for somebody physically and it happened, it happened. And we all have our desires and urges, whether it be food, alcohol, drugs, sex. But if you're going to take somebody's love and, and, and fall in love with somebody, I don't think that's possible to fall in love with, you know, multiple people at, at a time. And it's not fair as well. So you're in love with your wife? Yes. But you just cheat. And so you're not, you don't get emotionally involved with these other women? No. You know, some are, have been friends and, and, and nice people, but not like I feel a, a special bond that I would be with them forever or would want to. And, but, but you really, when you look at your wife, you're, you, you look at her 10 years, 15 years later, and you're still in love with her. Yes. You know, I'm human, and I'm not just a, a total um, scumbag. I, I, I do have feelings, and I do feel guilt for for my actions. But I love my wife completely, and I, you know, I feel bad for what I've done, but not to say that it would happen again or, or that I regret it from okay. a physical standpoint. Do you, so you so you don't regret it. It's just that you feel the guilt. Yes. Do you like being a cheater? Um. No, I, and I guess um, if there's parts about us that we don't like, we we tend not to consider ourselves that are really to well on that. I I find if I was addicted, to something it would be fun, fun in life overall, and I I like having fun. I like feeling good. Suppose if you were to eat chocolate, you like that feeling. You know you're on a diet, but you're going to eat chocolate again. I like people liking me, and I like physical contact, and I like a challenge. So it's, you know, all those things combined create the person that I am. Okay, so then do you think that when you talk about um, 
some aspects of cheating. Like you do like being a cheater, but there are some aspects. And I'm assuming that might be where you do feel bad about, you do feel the guilt. Uh, do you feel like that is going into like an addiction cycle where there's, you know, after you do something, that's when you start feeling bad? Do you ever say to yourself, I'm not going to do this again because you're in that realm of feeling guilt? Um, I don't do it perpetually per se, but there's some times just that it's more of a challenge. Uh, it's like, again, I'll bring up food as an analogy or drink. If you ever think you're alcoholic, you stop drinking or they're just to say, I'm not alcoholic, so I'm going to stop drinking and take a month or two off or I'm not going to eat, you know, sweets. So you, you, you put yourself at bay and I've tried it before, but I guess we have an over flirtatious personality and that's also something I want to speak about. It tends to lead to other things whether warrants it or not. And also not to be egotistical, but if you're charming and good looking and generally nice to people, people are going to flirt back and be attracted to you. It's just having willpower or, or lack of it that gets you where you're at. Okay. So you could wake up and go, all right, I'm, I'm going to try and not cheat or I'm just going to, you know, go about my day. And now your personality, you're very charming, good looking. You have your way with people in general. And mm-hmm. now all of a sudden, it sparked something in another person, how they yes. perceive you. And now this is where this, you might, the tug of war starts. Yeah. So, and sometimes it's, uh, the, the thrill of it is just a challenge. You know, there, there might be somebody that, that I meet that is also married and she's like, no way I never would. And she gets to know me a little better and, and we like each other. And then before you know it, she okay, comes so- to me and, when a woman says, I would never do that, do you, is that like a instant, okay, I'm going to take it's this one challenge. down? It becomes a challenge? Um, well, no matter, you know, I, I find it hard to believe, unfortunately, any of us. It's it's kind of human nature. People can say, I would never, never, never. But as the adage goes, never say never because you never know what's going to happen five years from now, a day from now. Uh, con- control is an illusion. You can't control what happens in life and feelings. And you might run into uh, a, a childhood flame that was like your first real crush. And it might be the perfect scenario where you'd never get caught and you might have a glass of wine and you just, wow, I ran into this, you know, childhood love interest and I'm, this is a once in a lifetime thing, so I'm going to do it. But I'll never do it again. But just that one time makes you a cheater. If you do it a hundred times, it makes you a cheater. And I think that all of us in our lives, no matter what it may be, with relationships or personal goals, have cheated and will because it's in our nature. So the saying that we always hear, once a cheater, always a cheater, you're saying that, if I'm understanding correctly, it's just we're human and that all people. I'm not saying all people people do. I'm saying all people have the ability to. And like I said, not all people are cheaters. You, it might happen once in your life, but you do it, I think. The way I grew up, and I'm not going to give too many details on it because people would uh, start to get more clues about me, I, I was judged, judged constantly from many different aspects. And I always wanted to look good, like anybody does. Any, nobody wants to be looked down upon in anything. So that that's another goal and character. So you, you get a thick skin, and let's say I was disabled. You do try to hide it and get over it, but eventually you'd be like, you know what? People are going to like me for who I am, and I don't I don't care what people think about my actions or what I do. We all have feelings and, and want to be looked at a certain way, and but for the most part, especially in today's society, you, you really do have to have a thick skin and let water roll off your back. Somebody might say, oh, I don't like her. She wears too much makeup. She's she's plastic. She's had plastic. She's so fake. She's had plastic surgery. Or, But you know what? If, if you live your life constantly worrying about how you're being judged, you're wasting a lot of time and only hurting yourself. As, you know, as a human, you need to grow and and be the strongest person you can. Do you think when these opportunities come that it's perfect timing? Or do you feel like you are meant to have these experiences with these other people? Um, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've created some of these situations um, and put myself in those situations where I easily could have neglected them um for instance let's say i was supposed to go to a 
a book club meeting, all right? Uh, I would go to a book club meeting where I, I would check them out and say, this one happens to have five women in it opposed to two women in it. You increase your odds and, and so forth, so you set yourself <laughs> up. But, you know, that's that, that's honestly, that, that's a good thing. Does it happen all – it's more so if you put yourself out there, and I'll give you an analogy. Even when I'm not trying, it happens. If I was in a room with your daughter, if you have one, your grandmother and you, I would treat all three of you the same. I would comment on your looks. I'd make you laugh. I'd be the funny guy. But I don't want any. I'm not a pedophile. I wouldn't want anything for your daughter. And I'm not into grandmas. But you, that's flirting when you want somebody, want something back from somebody. But if you're a big goof to everybody like I am, be it a guy or girl, that's not flirting. That's just being a goof. But if you look like Miss MJ over here, you're getting flirted with. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm wondering, because there are people out there that are caught, in mm-hmm. relationships like this um, that I, feel guilty, maybe is there is there any light that you want to shed on that, that they're on purpose? I do. I, I do. Um, well, when you say on purpose, I'm looking at more of a, a fate. I right. did have a relationship, and this is when I was younger with an older woman. Um, she, I was working with uh, one of her dogs, and – she had me over for lunch, and she was obviously unhappy in her marriage. I was a single, you know, college-age, you know, boy at that time, to be honest with you. And we had a relationship that went on for 13 years. At wow. first, I was like, wow, look at this. I'm, I'm the man. And then it was a relationship, and I felt her pain. And I used to try to get talk to her all the time and get her to work things out with her husband. And she would say, one day I'll understand. Now I understand. But back then, I didn't understand, and I just worked with it through. And in the, to make this story short, she eventually, once her kids got old enough, she did uh, divorce her husband, and then she did find her college, you know, boyfriend, and they are together now. And I'm not with her. And so she was not happy in her relationship, in her marriage. No. So it was just the no, choice yeah. of she had to make the decision to go ahead and mm-hmm. divorce in order to be, be with who she thought that she was meant to be with. And it wasn't a master plan on either of her parts. I just right. think that she was just hurting inside and opportunity arose. And you know, as fate has it, in the long run, she's the happiest she's ever been. When you and I talked, you brought up something that really surprised me. And you said that you were raised by a strong woman. You weren't from a broken home. Does your mother know that you're a cheater? Um, my mother knows me better than anybody. She knows that I have, but never knows to what extent. And if we were if we were out together shopping and she saw a cashier flirt me or something, she'd say with a you know, her smile and charm, behave yourself. Like joking around. Uh-huh. Um, but to be honest with you, and all mothers do this, and I'm now Jeffrey Dahmer, but she will always love me. Not It's not in a spoiled way because she definitely raised me to earn what I get and, and so forth. But, um, you know, mothers, if they don't turn a blind eye, always look at the best in their child, I'll say. No, absolutely. And if, I... and, 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 and if I tried flaunting it or, or just, disgracing my wife in any way publicly or kids, my mother would be the first one to probably smack me in the face. Right, because I'm glad you talked about that because there are a lot of women out there that, um, and I don't even want to put this on that men are the only cheaters because women cheat, but where you feel like you have favor with the the parent and then I think the reality is is that a mother's always going to love their child, no matter what. They're going to accept them and they're really not going to take the side so much, I guess, in the end, they need to understand that mom is always mm-hmm. going to love yeah. their child. Was your father a cheater? Um, yes, he was just a, a not a good person. Did Is that where you learned it from, that it was okay? No, 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 no. He, he, wasn't, he, he wasn't in my life growing up. So how where did you learn this behavior? 
was it something that you did like in high school and or your college years? Like, where did you think that you picked this up um, from? I don't. To be honest, with you, I didn't learn it from anybody. I would say it was kind of established. It sounds bad, but it's like a I won't say a life skill, but I didn't try to to be a cheater in high school, and I was pretty actually faithful to high school girlfriends. But you know, it's high school and. You're, you're really immature and stupid, and little things happen, whether it's a girl drunk right, kiss exactly. or uh-huh. a game of truth and dare, uh-huh. or you're hanging out with, a, you know, your best friend and his girlfriend, and she brings her friend, and we are going to talk about the stars all night. It happens a, a lot. Um, but it just, you know, just snowball effect and just, you know, kept going and going, and and it is what it is. Do you feel like certain women attract cheaters or certain people attract cheaters no i i no not at all um there's to be honest with you i'm i'm really more attracted to the inside beauty of a, a woman than the outside um, oh really and it's very it's very rare to have both and we're well, blessed when you do find somebody like that but uh there's been uh, you know women solid nines that flirt with me and every guy wants at the bar that I wouldn't give the time of day just because of their personality. And then on the other hand, I've, you know, I've kissed or, or got together with somebody who's maybe a, you know, a six, but she's just, uh, she's way more pretty on the inside and the complete package is there. Um, well, half the package, you know what I'm saying? But there's, to answer your question, there's not a specific type. There's just sometimes you get a feeling and, you know, you're, you, you connect with them in a, physical way right so it's that energy that when yeah. you walk into the yeah. room out of everybody that if we could bottle the one. It, we'd be billionaires oh my yeah. gosh right exactly where do you find the women that you choose like do you have apps that you use are you like on no. dating sites no 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 not at all not at all um like i tell all my single friends and people who might be divorced and so forth don't don't look for love and, you know, because when you do, it's not going to be the kind you want. But genuine love is just going to find you. And in my life and my style, if I don't look for it, maybe I throw out this so-called energy and it just, you know, it finds me. I don't, I, there's no, I wouldn't use an app or leave a, first of all, you're, you're leaving bad evidence. You're leaving trails of what you do. And and secondly, you know, it's if you have it, you have it and it'll come to you. And do you have a type of woman that you are that you when this person walks in the room and you're like, okay, she's got, you know, or is it really just an energetic attraction that pulls you in? And when the spark there's, is there, there, there's certain characteristics. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, like everybody loves a you know a beautiful smile and face. I do have my favorite body parts of a woman, but one thing that and what's your what's your favorite bo- what's your favorite body part? I just gotta um, know. Okay, if you put your finger on your belly button and then you make a diagonal to your leg, just about halfway in between that area, that like pelvic area, uh-huh. I would love to kiss you there and just you know, let <laughs> you know. Everybody uh-huh. does have a body everybody part. Does. Everybody does. Um, but as far as what attracts me, if you comes in a room, I like my smile, but I, I like a sense of humor, I think. A sense of humor and um, a self of confidence also is a big attraction i don't i don't want the girl who's keeping her head down eyes to the floor and no you want somebody who is that a type personality and ensure themselves that's just me personally do they know you are married and do you wear a wedding ring absolutely 100 percent of the time i wear a, we- a wedding ring and it's kind of funny every time about 90 percent of the time they will say you're married and they'll start to get going i say only when i'm home and I'll giggle back. If they're not married and so forth, they look right past it after a while. Okay, I just had a conversation yesterday with some friends, and we were discussing the fact that uh, they say that women are more attracted to men that have wedding rings on. Do you agree with that? Um, I do always wear mine, but... If I, you know, maybe they are. You know, it shows a sense of stability, a mm-hmm. sense of confidence. And if I had to bet, I would say yes. 
why not just be single? And you can have, like, as many women as you want. Um, well, in my world, number one, kids are priority. And secondly, if you could have your cake and eat it too, why not? Um, and I'm already in this committed relationship. I want to still be, I want to be in that relationship. Some people say, oh, I, I may not, I'm not in love with my wife. That is not true at all. I do love my wife, but I am cheated. So. Is your wife less desirable to you after you have cheated when you go back home? Is is the wife less desirable? Women want to know that because that's what they feel like. No, 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 no. For for the women out there, it's usually not you. The only time you're less desirable to us is usually when something that has nothing to do with us physically. It's more of a argument thing, with, whether you're being, um, you know, angry or grumpy about minuscule things around the house. Um, just, you know, if you want to go on about arguing with girlfriends at work and so forth, that's when we look, you know, we're not as attracted to you as we, we normally are. But what I do outside my house does not affect me inside the house at all. There's a reason I married my wife and love her, and, you know, that hasn't changed. It, and if it does change or, you know, it, would, it wouldn't be because of things I've done outside. What would she do if she found out that you cheated? She has no clue that you're a cheater. No. Um, well, she's, she's questioned some things, and with my type of personality, a lot of people flirt, and she sees me the way I am with people. Like I said, I, I am, I'm nice, overly nice to everybody. So, she, no, she has no idea. But if she found out all the times, um, I honestly am not sure. I I, I want to say she would divorce him, but I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Would you promise together, to never cheat again if you if that were the case and hold to it, if that's what you asked? Request that was the ultimatum? Yeah. Um. I'm not sure uh, may, if I might go another route. If confronted on it to that level, I might just say I apologize for you know the hurt and everything I've done, and and go our separate ways at that point. But um, I, I wouldn't want to, knowing me, I wouldn't want to betray somebody again that I've hurt once. You never want to hurt them once. It's just not my nature. Uh, how many women do you balance at once? Um, I don't, like I said, it's, it's not a relationship thing. So I, I don't, I balance one, my wife, and then every once in a while, there's somebody there or, you know, for a month or two, I'll have a, a little, you know, fling, smash buddy, whatever you want to call it, friends with benefits, but I don't balance multiple women at a time. When I had mentioned to you that I was cheated on, you were shocked which actually helped me feel better. And you said that the cheater doesn't know why. It's it's not about us. It's about the cheater. Yes. It has nothing to do with the person who's getting cheated on. Now, I'm sure there is that, you know, a small percentage of time where you, you know, were – not you in general, but say a lady out there has been cheated on was a total bitch, excuse my language, to her husband or ever. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to get her back. She's been neglecting me. She's been withholding sex from me. She's been, the house is a mess. She's just been rude, angry all the time. I'm going to go out and have a good night with the boys and find me somebody. I'm going to cheat on her. But usually it has nothing to do with you. And we love you the same. It's just opportunity arises. And like I said, guys are stupid. We take hold of it and Take, use it to our advantage. And then you also mentioned that um, it's on the woman if she sulks. Do you remember saying um, that? Well, I, I might have said it, but I I didn't mean it instantly. Everybody has a, a time to grieve and so forth, but if you're with somebody and it cheats with you or hurts you in any way, physical, mental, emotionally, however, you, you know, you if you become a victim perpetually if you don't do something about it. A, if you if you stay with them, that's your own fault. But B, get up off the mat and go on with your life. There's other people out there, and this, it's not to say you're not going to get your heart broken again, but 
be a strong person and better yourself and move on. It's not fair to you to be victimized twice by anybody in your lifetime. So if if somebody is cheating on somebody, they find out it's up to them to end it, make their decision there, to continue with it, accept it, move forward, or yeah. end it, and whatever move forward. You, and whatever you choose, let it go. Don't hurt that heart again day after day. I know it meant a lot to you, that relationship you had, but you, you have to better yourself and move on and grow as a person. You know, I think it's an ego thing. I mean, there's lots of marriages or relationships that, you know, somebody's cheated and they're stronger for it. But I also Absolutely. believe that it's our ego that can keep us in that state of pain, that cycle mm-hmm. of pain, not wanting to move forward because they're really Absolutely. not willing to let and the ego down. You, yeah, exactly. You think you're you're great. How could he have done that to me or she have done that to me? And it, it's tough to let go. But I learned at a very young age, whether think about it as a job. We've all been fired from jobs. And I was fired at a job when I was in high school. And I'd been there for a long time. And I thought that I had basically ran this place. I was everybody's favorite. And I did my job very well and did beyond my own job. And I'm not being egotistical saying that. It was just simply the truth. And out of nowhere, I was let go. Not completely out of nowhere. Um, I was young and dumb. But when it happened, I realized, wow, I'm replaceable. I really am replaceable. So everybody is replaceable no matter how good you are and how big your ego is. So, And, and being replaced. Put your ego in check. And I, right. could, have, I could have sat around and, and been like, oh, I'm not going to do this line of work ever again. And then they're, they're stupid. They're going to lose all this money. Of course, those are my in- instant reactions. But then in the long run, not, no, not in the long run. Quickly after that, I said, you know what? Go back to work. Do what you love doing and, and make the money. And I did. And I went on in the same industry at some place who's a competitor of theirs and went on to write up the board in my level of status. And you know, I would it. add to that and say that really that it's it's really acceptance. It's, it's accepting mm-hmm. that um, loving yourself has to become the priority. And if you have too much of an ego, then you're going to be – you know, most likely um, it's going to hit you hard if this does happen to you. But accepting yourself and loving yourself is how you move forward. You know what I found that was really surprising is that the men were the ones that were asking about this interview. There was a lot of women that were interested too, but the men, there were so many men that had questions and that kept on asking me, when are you going to interview him? Do you find that surprising? To be honest with you, I don't, and I'm going to tell you the truth. A lot of those men were hoping to get pointers on how they could cheat just by listening to our interview. Okay, so I got a guy on Snap. Uh, He said, if in the week you cheat and pass the threshold, do you just go back for more? So that sounds like you might be feeling a little guilty if you should have gone back for more or wanted to go back for more. Um, I'm just you know, assuming, but that's what he wants to know. If in the week that you cheat and pass that threshold, do you just go back for more? Do you say fuck it? Um, I, I don't put a time limit on it. Instagram, does wanting to stop make you want it more? That's a good question. Um, I would say more so for me personally, not, it's the challenge. More, you know, it's, it's a little sense of thrill. If you've ever, some people get up and stealing things. If you ever stole a candy bar from a store and you're like, oh, that was so cool. I want to steal something else. There's a thrill to it. And, you know, timing has to be right. You feel a little uh, Mission Impossible. You know, I have to cover my tracks and say I'm here with this friend and I'm going to do this and make sure that I'm, you know, change of clothes. I don't smell like this other person. It, it, there's a, a thrill in that somewhat. And that, I would say that makes you go back more so than um, the first thing you mentioned. Somebody else on Instagram wants to know, is it worth it? <sighs> to each his own, is it worth it? I wouldn't recommend it, but if you enjoy it, you're good at it, and you're not hurting anybody during it, yes. 
It's very rare that that happens, but yes, it is worth it if you're not hurting anybody, in my opinion. Hurting meaning? Anybody. If you don't, if the person that you're having an affair with doesn't catch feelings, and if you never bring it home and risk, you know, there's always risk there, but if you don't hurt your family. How do you, how do you, so how do I Emotions do get involved, though, when it comes to sex. Oh. You do, women emotionally get attached. Men get attached. Sex yeah, is just... It is. It is. It's a very central thing. Um, but you could be, you know, attached physically, but not emotionally. See, it's, a, it's a fine line that we're walking here. But if, if you're just going to look at the physical aspect and, you know... The, not you, but I'm sure there's some ladies out there that have had sex and it was just for the sex and went back because that guy was amazing. He might have been so stupid and didn't have the best job and had no intentions of staying with him, but I had to have sex with him one more time. That's just for the that's, sex. That's just for the sex. But in during that sex at that time, you know, when your bodies are together and looking into each other's eyes and you're feeling that that flutter in your stomach and you're about to melt and release, you, there is, an, especially for women and some men, there is that emotional connection, but it's not anchored in. It's not a major facet of the relationship and it's going to be done. It's never, in my eyes, in the shooter's eyes, it's never looked at as this is a means to have this great feeling over and over again. It's just for immediate satisfaction. You know what I really want to ask you? Uh, is when we could go out to dinner? No. <laughs> You've been trying to get, that's the other thing, audience. He goes after what he wants, don't you, Sebastian? Absolutely. Absolutely. Only because they have good taste. That's right. Thank you so much. Do women feel like they can change the cheater? Do they, does a woman think that she can take you from your wife? Does she think that she's the exception and that you will end up um, falling in love with them and running off with them? Do you find that a lot? No. No, 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 no. Because you just make sure um, it's not set up that way? A hundred percent. You go into it knowing that I'm in a fully committed relationship, that my kids are paramount, and that it is what it is. Um, the the first year relationship that I mentioned earlier, she did have very strong feelings for me and told me that she loved me and so forth when we were had been having that relationship for so long, but she knew deep down that it never would happen. Um, but so uh, that, that's that. <laughs> um, I have to ask you, if somebody on Instagram wants to know what's your funniest sexual experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, how do I say this? My funniest sexual experience huh. um, I'll tell you a silly high school story um, I had I was dating a, a star athlete and another girl at my school was dating another star athlete and they were off at a competition and so I went over to the girl's house, and in the middle of it, we were both naked. There was a knock at the door. And when this knock at the door came, it, this is like a scene from a movie. I'm trying to be quiet and hide in the closet with a rock hard penis. And her three foot tall German shepherd comes in and is growling at me, and I could hear this other man's voice. This other man ended up being a great friend was a huge guy and I was nervous. I'm like, oh my God, we're so caught. And uh, just standing there naked with the dog growling at you was pretty funny now looking back at it. Um, so you ended up being friends with the guy? We were friends before, during, and after, yeah. Oh my gosh, so you cheated on, oh wow. The best sex you ever had? If I had to narrow it down to one person, is one person not just pop up in your mind? Probably my wife, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. That's a good answer, Sebastian. An honest answer. 
How did you lose your virginity? <laughs> that just seems to be a question I, I ask a lot of guys. Okay. Um, I lost my virginity with, <laughs> this is hysterical. I Even lost better than virginity. being naked, uh, a dog growling at you? <sighs> I'm trying to figure out how to say this without giving up a huge clue because, uh, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a girl next door, typical girl next door story. Uh, friends with her her younger brother, and it was a you know a sleepover, and it was one of those keep try to keep quiet things, and it happened. That does happen a lot. Whenever I ask that question, that seems to be the typical scenario. So fathers out there have daughters, do not move next to boys, just ask with little boys. Well, make sure you've got the security <laughs> on the house and the windows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what would you say to a man that is cheating on his wife or has cheated, does feel the guilt, um, and may just not be happy in his marriage? If you're, if, if men are happy in their marriage and they're cheating – he needs to figure out, well, to figure out, A, why he's not happy. And if that's possible to change, change. If not, he needs to end a relationship so he could do other things and not feel guilty. Because right now, he's not only putting his wife at risk, but he obviously cares about her because he feels so much guilt. And he's also in pain, so fix it or end it. Could you go to your wife and say, look, I want an open marriage? Or does that change how it feels to cheat for you and what it does for you? Um, First of all, I, I she probably wouldn't go for it. Is She probably wouldn't go for it. Maybe early in our relationship she might have thought about it, but uh, I don't think I definitely don't think she would do it now. Um, she's not as a secure as a person as I am, and I don't think. I would be necessarily okay with it as well because I would be more concerned about the emotional attachment she might get towards somebody else. Say that last part again. I would be probably the most, the biggest fear I'd have is she, I would be scared about her having emotional attachments for somebody else. Okay. So that's what I thought and you that said. Would be yes. And that would be devastating to me. Okay, so you would be afraid if she cheated that she would emotionally attach to someone else. Yeah, or even not even cheated. Um, like, say, if we had an open relationship and went into a lifestyle, that would be my biggest worry. So that's one of the reasons I would never even bring it up to her, besides the fact that I'm pretty sure she would say no anyway. Do you feel like you have the ability to keep this in control in a way that your emotions, you know that you're pretty confident that you'll, they'll always be in check. You will not emotionally attach to anyone and therefore it is okay. But she, on the other hand, if she had experiences with other men or women, whatever her thing was, that she mm -hmm. could get emotionally attached and that that is out of your control, um, I don't think either of us or anybody on this planet for that fact has control, but as far as the likelihood, and if I was going to give it a percentage, it definitely would be less likely that I would fall for somebody else. Could it happen? Sure. I doubt it ever will, but I would, I would be less certain of her falling for somebody else just be, just because of her, you know, mental makeup. Do you make sure she's always happy? Is she always fulfilled? Do you tell her that she's beautiful? Do you, you know, buy her things? Whatever makes her happy, Do you, are you always supporting her in a way that she feels loved and connected and that you are in love with her? Um, not always, but a majority of the time. You know, I'm, nobody's perfect. I, I, I think one of the biggest attractors I have is, is me being a father to her children. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I, I take care of, you know, all of her needs. So I wonder when I, when I talk to you, if that's, if you're handling that at home and what would you do if you were surprised 
that she actually has had an affair. Let's say she had an affair five years ago and regretted it and, and never wanted to do it again. How would you feel? Um, I would feel, like human nature, I'd feel sad, disappointed in her. I would I'd want to find out more of the details. What was going on in our relationship five years ago that led to this? Um, or if it was something that just happened. You know, a girl's night out, she had a few margaritas and, you know, hooked up with a random person that she felt uh, emotional or physical attraction to. I would I would want to make sure before I even thought about sticking her out of the relationship, if it was just a one-time thing and, you know, if it was something that I could prevent it or prevent the future, I would want to know how. Cheating typically is a symptom of something else in a marriage, and it's said women cheat for love and men cheat for sex. Yeah. It's very interesting, this this interview, the, the dynamics of cheating and what, what I think people thought that they were going to get listening to it. And I think that they can go home and self-reflect and, you know, create conscious thinking about their own life and if they've been cheated on, if they're cheating, if they say they would never cheat. Well, hopefully it'll open up eyes um, to some people that may have problems or not have problems. They just want to better themselves and or their relationships and can use it as a tool. If if people can't be real themselves, then they're just going to live their lives being a fake person to themselves and others. You know, I'm a life coach. I'm a power coach. And I could never judge anybody in front of me during one of my sessions or even on the street when people come to me and confine things to me while I'm standing there. I could never judge anybody across from me because it's all about the human connection. Mostly it's about the consciousness. And what I really like about your answers, people may not like them, but this interview I feel has taken it to the listener mm -hmm. and their own awareness about who they are. Exactly. You need to judge for yourself, not others. Usually people who spend a lot of time judging others are just unhappy with themselves and have nothing better to do. Who has time to sit around and judge people? There are three questions that I always ask every guest, and I want to uh -huh. ask you, uh, what is the love? Where is the love in your story, in your life? Every time I do feel any guilt, it does remind me of the great love that I do have at home. And on the other side of it, I do find the love of myself when I are do, when well, I do find love for myself when I am pleasing, you know, doing things that please me. Where are the lies or what is the lie? The lie. The lie is... Not being honest with yourself and who you are, not being honest to the people that you care about. And we all do it, no matter to what extent, whether it's minor or major. There is lies the lie. And that could be something that we're telling ourselves. Mm -hmm. Just not being true to yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the truth? The truth is that we all have problems and inner demons, but we all add something special to this earth and need to keep making it a better place for all of us. Sebastian, I want to thank you for being open and honest with us. Peace and love, everybody. <laughs> all right, everybody. There you got it. It's the truth. Hey, hey, hey.